Okay, so welcome back, and now we're going to talk about a couple of other characteristics of um, lines and angles. And, but this has to do with parallel lines that are also then cut by another line, a third line. Okay, so in this case here, we have two lines. Let's call this line L and M, and then this can be K. And so we see that line L and M, we're going to say that those are parallel lines. Okay, so these are parallel lines. Now, what does it mean to be parallel lines? Well, parallel lines are just any two lines or any lines that, are, that will never intersect. So no matter how far in either direction you extend the line, they'll, they will never intersect. Okay, so that's what we mean by parallel lines. Okay. So now, if we have another line that intersects both two or more parallel lines, we call that line, in this example K, called a transversal. A transversal is a line that intersects two or more um, parallel lines. So when that's the case, if we have a transversal, then interesting things come out of that. We know certain things about the angles that are formed by the transversal. And so I have an example of a transversal K with two parallel lines, L and M. And uh, so if we've got the angles 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And so what do we know? A couple of things that we know is this. First thing we know is that what we call alternating exterior angles. Okay, so alternating exterior angles. So what are those? Well, alternating means they're on opposite sides of the transversal. Exterior means that they're outside of the uh, parallel lines. So what would be alternating exterior angles? Well, it would be something like, for example, 1 and 8. Okay, 1 and 8 are considered alternating exterior angles. Okay, what else are alternating exterior angles? Well, 3 and 6 are also considered alternating exterior angles. Okay, what do we know about alternating exterior angles? They are, uh, they are congruent. Or in other words, they have the same measure, okay? So that's one um, outcome that comes out of transversals and you know, parallel lines. Another outcome is that we have something else that we can look at, it, which is called alternating interior angles. Now again, alternating means that they're opposite sides of the transversal. But interior means that they're on the inside of the parallel lines. So what would be an example of alternating interior angles? Well, this one and this one, 2 and 7. Okay? What else is alter alternating interior angles? 5. and four, okay? So what do we know about alternating interior angles? We know that those are also congruent. So that means four is the same as five. Angle four has the same measure as angle five. Angle two has the same measure as angle seven. Okay, so those two things we know when it comes to transversals, okay? Now, what else do we know? We know about, um, oh, corresponding angles. Okay? <laughs> okay, what are corresponding angles? Well, corresponding angles are angles that are on the same side as the transversal, 
okay? And the same side of the, of, well, well, they're on the same side of the transversal. For example, angle one is a corresponding angle to angle five, okay? Angle two is a corresponding angle to angle six. And then also angle three is a corresponding angle to angle seven. And angle four corresponds to angle eight. And so what do we else, what do we know about corresponding angles? Corresponding angles are congruent. They have the same measure. Okay, so now we've got three other characteristics of when angles are, when they, uh, angles have the same measure. Okay, so alternating interior angles, alternating exterior angles, and alternating, or excuse me, co corresponding angles. Now this is, these are characteristics of when we have angles of the same measure when we're dealing with transversals, okay? And uh, I think that's it. What else do we know? Um, Okay, so now let's use this as an example. Let's say, let's say, let me get rid of this. Now, Ken, don't forget the other stuff. Uh, vertical angles are congruent, right? So there's lots of things, lots of tools that we can use in our toolbox here. Okay, so let me write these back up. One, two, four. Okay, so here are my angles. Now let's say angle one is 70 degrees. Okay, now, can we figure out the rest of these? Absolutely, in fact, there's lots of things we could do and there's multiple ways of getting all these answers. Okay, for example, I can use the fact that vertical angles are, are equal. Vertical angles have the same measure, so angle four must be 70 degrees. Okay? Now, I also know that alternating exterior angles are of the same measure, so that means this one and this one. Okay? So I know that's going to be 70 degrees, which, by the way, makes number five because it's a vertical angle, has to also be 70 degrees. Now the cool thing is, is this is a corresponding angle to this, and you see that they're the same angle. And this is a corresponding angle uh, to this one. So you know, those are equal. So it all makes sense so far. Now, how do I get the rest of these? Well, easy. I can use the fact that these two angles add up to 180 degrees. They add up to a straight angle. So this one plus this one must add up to 180, which means angle six has to be 110 degrees. Well, guess what? All the rest of these I know have to be 100, 110 degrees because this is a vertical angle, so that means this has to be 110 degrees. This is alternating interior angles, so this also has to be 110 degrees, but it's also 110 degrees because it's a supplemental Right? Both of these add up to a 180 degrees. And of course, this one is also 110 degrees. And we're done. So lots of different ways you could have approached this and filled this out. Okay? So other than that, have a great day.